Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a little bit of a Q&A and a life update because I've got some big things that are happening and of course that may have an impact on my videos and on my channel so I just wanted to kind of talk through it all. It's all very, very exciting. And so I asked for questions on my social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube itself and you guys came through. There were lots and lots of questions so I couldn't pick them all but I picked some that hopefully will explain everything that's happening and also be a bit of fun to answer. So first up I had questions just on how I'm doing health wise. If you didn't already see I posted maybe a couple months ago now that I was having some really difficult health problems and I was gonna have to cut down on the videos I was doing and everything because it was just all too much and I just wasn't well at all. Thankfully now I'm doing an awful awful lot better. I am making so much good progress and I'm so happy with it and I'm finally getting treated and everything seems to be going in the right direction thankfully which means very excitingly that I am still able to move abroad as planned next month. So I've split up the questions I got into some wee sections and I'll split the video into these sections too just in case you want to skip about and the first of these is university so I have some questions on just what am I studying and I'm doing a joint honours degree in French and Spanish and Latin American studies. This means I study both the languages and also the culture and the history and the literature of these countries and we know I like literature so this is just a really great degree for me. I really really love studying it. I've read some amazing books and learned so 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 much through doing it. It's just been such a good fun time. I've really enjoyed it. I'm so glad I picked the course I did at the university I did. It's been pretty great considering half of it's been online as well because I'm just going into my third year now so I've had two years. Um, someone asked what my favourite and least favourite part of university is and favourite has definitely been the culture classes and um, getting more than just the language classes and um, getting an insight into different countries political situations, their history, their culture, the literature that kind of formed them and really getting an insight into the country nowadays in the modern day as well rather than just learning the language and knowing absolutely nothing about the actual countries that speak these languages. What my least favourite would be would definitely just be the workload and the stress. It's not been an easy degree, it's definitely, there's a lot and lot of lot of work and grammar and everything to learn and vocabulary to practice and I definitely haven't been doing the best with that. I've been kind of doing the bare minimum to get by so it's definitely something I'd like to work on when I go back to university for my fourth year to just practice actually studying again and get into that habit because this past year I just wasn't fit enough well enough to be studying to my full capacity and I didn't realise that until more recently when I spoke to doctors and they're like oh yeah so that's kind of why and it all made sense so I'm really looking forward to being able to study to my kind of full capacity again but especially with how I was feeling the workload was just so much it was just never ending I really really struggled with it especially as also I was working I was doing YouTube reading arcs all of that it was just an awful awful lot and the final question in this section is some tips for reading in a foreign language and my like number one tip that took me a while to learn but so worth learning is do not look up every second word in the dictionary you do not need to and you will not be able to read like that if you're really not understanding anything maybe put the book down and you're just not ready yet maybe try something that's aimed at younger readers or something something a bit simpler but if you're finding you're understanding the majority of it but you keep looking up words it's slowing you down and you need to stop and just kind of get by on the gist of it and it gets you into the habit of reading and you really start to understand things a lot easier and it all flows a lot better um if you do get stuck on a scene or something then yes look up a word if a word keeps recurring and you don't know what it is yes look it up but not like every second word because you just won't get anywhere like that that took me a long while to learn because with my degree I was studying these books so I needed to fully understand them but I just I needed to learn to stop looking everything up and just get by on my own knowledge and I did and now I actually really enjoy reading in foreign languages so it's definitely it takes a lot of focus a lot more than just reading in English. Next up I want to talk about my upcoming move so I had a couple of questions of just where and why and what is happening? So I am moving to France, I'm moving to a small town in Brittany in the northwest. This is an essential part of my degree because I study languages I have to spend time in a country that speaks the target language so I'm doing France for four months now and then in the new year I'll be doing four months in Spain as well. 
I've got a job in both countries working as an English language assistant in a school in France but then in a university in Spain which is really exciting and scary as well but I'm very very excited for both of these. I want to be a modern languages teacher when I grow up so when I grow up oh my god Teresa you're 20 years old <laughs> but yes when I am an actual adult I would like to be a modern languages teacher and go and do my postgraduate in teaching so this is like the perfect experience for me and it's going to help with my language and it's going to be great so I'm very very excited to be moving. I'm moving at the very very beginning of September. I'm meant to be starting my job on the 6th but we'll see if that happens. I have had some trouble getting a visa and getting an appointment but hopefully it's all going to go to plan now. I've done everything I can so I just have to wait and see. I also had a question here about anywhere I want to visit while I'm over and definitely Paris. I have some friends there, I want to just explore the city and like the history and everything and I've also been promised a trip to Disneyland so like <laughs> cannot say no to that. And also there's so many lovely places near me that I really want to visit. I've like started a wee list and it's all super close to me and French public transport's a hell of a lot better than I've got here so hopefully I should be able to get around and do all of these trips. and. Very much looking forward to that. Someone asked how I feel about moving during a pandemic and it has been stressful. Um, thankfully right now there's travel between France and Scotland and there's no need to isolate if you're vaccinated so thank god I've not got to deal with that but it's definitely been a bit of a faff and just it's really a stressful situation though actually I would say Brexit has been a lot worse on my kind of planning my travel because I've had to get a visa and that's been an absolute nightmare but as I say it's all done now so hopefully I will receive it in time for me to move. Someone asked what I'm most excited about and honestly I'm so excited about everything but definitely getting back into teaching and working with kids in school that's gonna be so much fun it's what I want to do when I grow up I said and it's therefore something that I absolutely love doing so I'm very excited to be getting back to that. And the final question in this section is what books am I taking? And the answer is none. I can't. I have two suitcases and I need to prioritise bringing things like clothes over books unfortunately and weight restrictions as well so I'm not bringing any books with me, just my Kindle. So that's going to be a fun time. I'm definitely going to miss having my bookshelf and just all these books I have on it but you know what, it's only four months. I can survive with an e-reader for four months. <laughs> The next section is books and someone has asked me for my top five sapphic YA books and here they are in this precarious stack. We have got The Scapegracers by Clark, The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagirdar, The Falling in Love Montage and Not My Problem by Keir Smith and It Goes Like This by Neil Moreland. I have adored all of these books and they are all lesbian books so like is that a surprise? But these are all just absolutely incredible. I so 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 recommend them. Next up someone asked for my first book I remember reading and that was the first book in the kind of magic kitten series. This was just this very like very very junior book series that my parents read to me that followed a little kitten that took on different forms because it was running away from some bad guys and each different form it would like get friendly with a little girl and they'd go on adventures together. You know classic kid stuff. But I remember reading this very vividly because I misunderstood the ending when I was about five or so and I understood it as the bad guys got the cat and I was distraught but you know turns out he got away we went on to another book but I so remember that just bawling my eyes out my parents couldn't figure out why but yeah that was my favourite books as a kid I just, I loved all the animal stories and all the animal friendship ones. Actually speaking of favourite books as children someone has asked for that and for that I'd have to say Hetty Feather by Jacqueline Wilson. I love Jacqueline Wilson's books but Hetty Feather had such a special place in my heart just because I guess I've always loved historical books. It's about a little orphan girl living in the Victorian era and the adventure she goes on and it's a lot of fun. I never finished the series because they kind of released after I'd aged out of those books so don't actually know how it ends but I did very much enjoy that book series. Someone asked for a trope that I think is overrated and you're not gonna like this but I'm definitely saying enemies to lovers. I think enemies to lovers can be done so well but it takes an awful lot of tension and build up like the Lock Tomb series for example. I don't even know if that's gonna be enemies to lovers like that's the kind of stage it's at but I don't know I just I don't enjoy it so much. I much prefer things like friends to lovers. I just 
I don't get it. It's not my favourite. Next up, someone asked for my top three favourite books this year, and I have to say it is this three. I've got The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski, Getting the Knife by Tamsin Muir, and It Goes Like This by Neil Moreland. I have loved all of these. I went feral for these two. This one's just a lovely story of friendship and like first love and second chances, and it's just so sweet. But I just loved all of these books so much. The next two questions both have the same answer, and that is the falling in love montage. So I was asked, a book I'd love to see is a movie and the book that's impacted me the most, and definitely this one. I think it would make a fantastic movie, it's got all the classic rom-com elements you need, and I think it would just work so 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 well on screen. And if you haven't been on my channel for a while you've maybe not heard me talk about this book as much, but there's some videos like my favourite books of 2020 where I go very in depth about how much this impacted me and what it meant to me. This book really really helped me accept that I was a lesbian and be proud of myself and proud of that label and I just love it so much for doing that. It's so special to me and Kira is just the loveliest and she sent me this signed copy so like shout out to her for dealing with me just being soppy over all of her books because they're so good. The next question is particularly relevant right now and it's how do I get out of a reading slump and really I think it depends. The what I've been going through recently is just feeling very flat and nothing about the books that I read, just not enjoying them as I know I normally would. And so with that I've decided I'm probably just a bit burned out and just to take a break from reading and do other things and like come back to it and remember how to love it. And I think that definitely works because like there's a reason why you're having a reading slump and sometimes you just need a little break away from it. Other things I'd advise are things like reading fan fiction, rereading books that you've loved before and this kind of just gets you into the habit of reading again so you can then pick up another book. When I do the fan fiction route I usually go until I read something so bad I need a published book to like remind me about good writing. <laughs> like that's what I'll end up doing but yeah I think reading slump sometimes you've just got to let it happen and there's probably a reason why it's happening. The next question is do I annotate my books and right now I've only ever tabbed books but I would love to reread some of my favourites and just write all over them because I just think books that have been so well loved and scribbled over look so pretty and they're so like personal to you as well and, and I would just love to do that. Probably with like the falling in love montage, one last stop, things like that, some of my favourites. I also think if someone annotates a book for you that is like the best gift, that is so cool and so sweet and I would simply die if like a friend or a significant other did that for me, like mm, that would be incredible. The next question is what book character would you like to rail or get railed by? <laughs> and um, next question! <laughs> what was the first sapphic book I read? Um, that was The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skrotsky, this is a futuristic kind of pirate that book, it's got enemies to lovers, and it's got like a little baby sea monster who's the absolute cutest, like it's a big puppy, and I really enjoyed it, it's like action packed, super quick read. The next question asks for my most anticipated sapphic release of 2022, and I have many. I have a list of all the books I want to read next year and there's over 80 titles, like there's a lot and a lot of them are sapphic, so I will be doing my anticipated releases video again like I did last year so look out for that sometime soon. But to answer this question it's definitely I Kiss Dara Wheeler by Casey McKiston. This is the author of One Last Stop and Red, White and Royal Blue. She's coming out with a YA rom-com. It sounds so so good. I'll talk about it more in the video but like I am so ready for another Casey McKiston rom-com. It sounds so good. <laughs> And the final question for this kind of section is my thoughts and feelings on the Discord server for my book club growing so fast and I am in shock. <laughs> We're now over 800 members and I'm just, I cannot process this. I did not expect anything like this when I started my book club and the Discord server. There's like 1100 followers on Twitter now. We've just announced our first book, It's She Who Became the Sun, so definitely go and check the links in my description if you want to get involved but like I cannot believe it, I honestly can't. I'm, I'm just so grateful for everyone that's in the discord as well for being so lovely and welcoming and just creating this community space that I really wanted when I had the first idea for this discord and it's just worked so well and I just love it so much. And the final kind of section I split this video into is miscellaneous, just every other question that didn't fit in these categories. And the first one asks for any non-bookish hobbies that I have. And so first up I have to mention cross-stitch. 
I finally finished this last night. I am in love. I just think it's very, very pretty. It took me a good few months, but I think it was worth it. Um, so I like doing that while just watching TV or a film or YouTube or listening to an audiobook. Um, I also really love like cooking and baking. I really got into that in during lockdown, really. Um, my dad's partner, my stepmother, she is such a good cook and baker. So she's been like showing me how to do it all, which has been a whole lot of fun. The next question asks how I balance school and booktube, a social life and just everything else. And the answer is I do not. This is part of the reason I got ill, was just the stress of trying to balance everything. So like, I'm not one to go to for advice because I just try and do everything and then get burned out and ill. So don't recommend that particular path. Um, but really, I just having everything planned out, having set days to do things and knowing when to get things done by really helps me. I get very overwhelmed if I have lots of things to do, but no kind of order to it. So that definitely helps me. I live for my like little diary that I plan everything in. It's come in so handy as well as things like Notion to keep track of things for university and how far along my videos are. I really, really just love planning. <laughs> I can spend my whole life planning and never doing, but it really helps me kind of get things to make sense in my brain. Um, Another question asks, if I have pets, I do. I have a dog called Topsy. He is very cute. He's a Cocker Spaniel. He is coming up for 10 years old, which is, a scary thought because I just remember when he's a little baby but oh well he is a grumpy old man now. <laughs> the next question asked for my comfort book, movie, series and artist and the book would definitely be The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. I love this series. I have reread it so many times. It is I don't know why it's such a comfort book because it's like brutal but I really really love it and the characters so much. And for movies, I don't really watch movies that often, I have to admit, but I really loved Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey and also I love some Marvel films, especially like Black Widow I watched recently and I'm in love with Yelena, so that's definitely going on the comfort watch list. And series is actually answering some other people's questions, which is, have you watched She-Ra? Yes, I have watched She-Ra. I'm obsessed with She-Ra. So I watched it last summer in like three days um then rewatched the fifth season because i just couldn't get over it i was so in love with it obsessed with it this is a kid show it follows a sapphic relationship it's enemies to lovers done very 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 well it's just like friendship and everything's magical and it's a lot of fun um i'm planning on re-watching it actually when i move just to have that kind of comfort and i am so excited and artist is halsey it's always halsey i am so excited for a week today, Friday the 27th, my birthday, and also the release of their new album, If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power. It looks so good. I'm just so hyped. And I'm sad that I can't see the film because I'll be too busy with moving stuff. So really hoping that's going to be available somewhere else. Um, next question is, how did I tell my family I was a lesbian and were they accepting? And yes, they were, very thankfully. I have to admit, I came out completely accidentally. It, I actually kind of love this story because my mum had been helping me just like reading over an essay I was doing for school where I was talking about the lack of queer representation in Hollywood and I was not having a good time with my teacher for this essay because she completely disagreed with me. She thought there was like heaps and heaps and I'm like, what are you watching then? because I am not watching it. But yes, anyway, I, on a final draft of this essay, I actually added in something personal about me and my sexuality, forgetting that I wasn't out to anyone. I just wanted to kind of go here, fuck you to the teacher, but I gave my mum this to read and she learned that way that I was gay. So that's how you come out to a parent, completely accidentally. <laughs> but it, it did go well, thankfully, and She's so lovely and supportive, so it's all worked out fine. Um, the next question is, do I write and would I like to? I used to write, um, but this same teacher was very critical of my writing and it kind of put me off. So I've been trying to remember how to love it again. So I've not written in a few years, but I've got some story ideas bubbling about that I would like to definitely explore at some point. Do I think I'll learn another language after French and Spanish? I would love to. I don't know what, I'm considering something like German just to have something completely different because I do both romantic languages but who knows, honestly maybe I'll need to learn a language for something but 
I just really fancy learning more. I love, love, love learning learning languages. That's why I do a degree in it. <laughs> the next question is, how's your love life? The answer is not going well. And the next question is, movies and TV shows that I recommend. And actually, I'm going to have a video recommending sapphic films and TV shows going up in a couple of months, maybe. I'm not sure I have it all planned out, though. And yeah, so you'll get a bunch there, but there's the ones I've talked about already, like She-Ra, and a non sapphic one that I watched recently was Young Royals on Netflix. This is a, I believe, Swedish show. It's queer. It follows the Prince of Sweden, and he attends a boarding school. He falls in love with a boy. It's all very cute. It's got big red, white, and royal blue vibes. I definitely recommend it. And yes, that was the last question, so it's the end of the video. So I hope this has been interesting and you've maybe learned something new about me. Comment a fun fact about yourself if you fancy down below, and you will also find all my links to my social media, the book club that I've mentioned in the description if you want to check them out. And yes, just thank you very much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you with another video soon.